good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Rico Francis. I'm the director of uh, AUB Art Galleries and Collections. It's my pleasure to welcome everybody here this evening. Uh, especially a pleasure to uh, welcome you to the exhibition within an exhibition. So if I can just uh, explicate a little bit. We, have, we had on display, uh, which opened a couple of weeks ago, um, a major collection of our permanent collection. So that's the AUB uh, permanent collection of art. And then within that, within the space of that permanent collection, Zaina and uh, Hala have installed uh, uh, a setup that sort of cuts across the exhibition, if I can say. You, it'll be evident once you get inside. You'll actually see the, uh, you'll see the installation of, of Zaina and Hala. Also, uh, in the window arches, just on the other side, you'll see two paintings, one each by Zaina and Hala, and that, that constitutes the collection itself. I have to add a, a, a few comments. Uh, as the custodian of the permanent collection, which is being disrupted, uh, I have to say that uh, the, on the one hand, we're extremely proud of the AUB art collection. Um, the disruption happens in many ways. Uh, you'll, as you'll see, there's an organic quality to it. The fact that it's by women uh, also disrupts part of the official history that's, that's partly being told in our permanent collection. I will add, though, it's true that the permanent collection is, consists mostly of works by male artists of a particular kind and a particular tradition. Um, but I'm also very pleased to say, I, I, I will say also, I, I wish we had more art by women artists, but we are very proud of the one statue that we do have. You can actually see it in the window behind you there, uh, just on the far left of the window, uh, the kind of Perspex Cubes, which is actually a work by uh, Salwa Rado Shuer, and that we're very pleased with as well. So I encourage you both to have a look at the permanent collection and to take in the, the, the disruption that kind of cuts across the permanent collection on the floor. Uh, and I'm very happy to have everybody here to see that. And with that, I will introduce you now to Dean Nadia Sheikh, who will say a few more words. So good evening again, and I think that you are maxed, maxed on, maxed up, you know, maxed with all the speeches that you've been hearing in the last two days. Uh, I want to welcome you again to this uh, intervention uh, within the AUB permanent exhibit. Again, I would like you to see the whole, the entire show, you know, the permanent exhibit and the, and the intervention as well. Uh, for those of you who just arrived, uh, it includes the artworks of Hala Air and Zena Khalil. And, you, and for those who were actually at, at the panel just uh, 10 minutes ago, uh, this intervention provides a visual compendium to the last panel, which has tried, uh, which tried to stress how important visual culture is when we speak about heritage. Uh, it demonstrates uh, a different narrative, and more so perhaps when it is women who are the narrators. Um, this intervention, as uh, my colleague uh, Rico Francis just mentioned, is, was actually meant to be a disruption to the display of the permanent collection, and I'm very pleased that he likes the disruption, so thank you. Um, the artists in the presentation earlier uh, stressed their status as women artists. Uh, it is important to support uh, women artists, uh, and I'm very glad that this conference and the intervention here in the, in the Biblos Gallery uh, gave a small space towards some empowerment. So welcome again, and I hope you will enjoy the exhibit. Thank you, Dean Sheikh. I would like to introduce Nahla Khaddaj Boudiab, the Deputy Manager of AM Bank and the CEO. Nahla has been instrumental in her support of this project from the beginning. She worked intimately with us, so did her staff and the whole AM Bank family to make this project possible. Thank you. Good evening. So you've had two days of history, where we came from, what happened to us, some pain, some intense emotions, and ecstasy when it comes to how far we can go spiritually. I want to talk a little bit about diversity. I want to share with you a personal story that marked my life. So I grew up in Canada, a country that cherishes diversity and builds its culture on it. I was 13 years old in the classroom, and I made a very negative comment about a whole community. My teacher heard me. I was pulled into her office, and she said, you know, since you think you know so much about this community, you need to go do some research. 
and come back giving us some positive characteristics about this community. Now, this was many years ago, so there was no internet, there was no iPad. I had to go to the library. The 13-year-old girl that walked into the library was limited by the walls of the library as her view. The 13-year-old that got out of the library was wondering, how do I touch the sky and what's after the horizon? This is what diversity does. It unleashes the hunger for learning. It makes us realize that we know very little. It changes the way we look at the world. It increases tolerance. If I want to support this in the academics, since this is a university, the notion of diversity has been under study by scholars for many, many years. We have scholars like Sonia Nieto, Thomas and Eli, who actually linked diversity to learning. Gomes defined learning as a basic human need. And Peter Drucker stated that learning is the one thing that made us, mankind, dominant over the rest of the species on Earth. Learning is the only way to be alive. We need learning to be able not to age, to rethink, to be able to understand what is happening around us. If you take it a step up to the, to the organizational environment, you have authors that have linked learning to competence. They, learned, learn, they linked learning to actual performance. And more importantly, the Harvard Business Review published an article li linking diversity to innovation. So as a CEO of an institution, we're interested in the, in the literature, it's important to us. We took all these notions and we decided to implement them in our organization. We implemented diversity in all its forms, religious, skill-based, gender. In fact, our board of directors officially committed to gender diversity in the Arab world. And we were the first bank to do this in the Arab world. We're hoping other banks will follow. What I can tell you is I concur with the literature. Diversity does drive tolerance. It does drive innovation. It does drive competition. It does drive the, per, the, the organization's ability to properly perform. Can you imagine how privileged we are to be in a country that has diversity in, the, in its natural DNA? You know, countries like Canada use their immigration policy to bring diversity into the country, and they base their values on a diverse culture. Can you imagine how privileged we are in Lebanon to have diversity entrenched in our DNA? Look around you, you will see Lebanese from different sectors, from different religious sectors. You'll see Lebanese that have grown up outside Lebanon. You'll see Lebanese that have grown up in Beirut. Can you imagine bringing all this knowledge to one little country and making it the main foundation of our unity? Can you imagine if teachers in our schools decide to deal with negative comments the same way my teacher dealt with it? Can you imagine the power of being able to connect with each other and create a different future and, cr and have dreams that are cherished and pushed by love and our respect for each other. If we, were not, if we didn't have the diversity, we would age. Our minds would age. Learning cannot occur without diversity. I hope that the exhibition that you're going to see will open our eyes to go and see the world in Zena and Hala's eyes. And I hope that we can benefit from their inspiration to dream about where we, we want to end up and where, what kind of country we want to create. Thank you so much for being here, and I hope you enjoy the exhibition. <laughs>